Her mission, to make Scotland an independent country. Her hope, a referendum next year. I can announce that the Scottish Government is proposing that the independence referendum be held on the 19th of October 2023. In days, a court will consider if a vote can be held. Nicola Sturgeon's had extraordinary success, but not everyone's on board. Yet the most pressing problem everywhere affects every one of us. Warnings of blackouts to UK ministers. We do have good energy supplies in the UK. We can get through the winter. Struggling to keep control after spooking the markets. I get it. And I, and I Are changed, you sorry? I changed the policy. Are of you course, sorry? Of course I'm sorry. And plenty of the public. The question that confronts us, wherever you are this morning, how to be sure this doesn't happen. This morning we're joined live in the Aberdeen Art Gallery by Scotland's First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon. probably the most successful politician of her generation. Certainly the last one standing after several <laughs> prime ministers have come and gone during her time in office, but that dream of an independent Scotland still eludes her. Could the country reach another junction soon? Well, here she is, First Minister, last woman good standing morning. Is not perhaps the best <laughs> intro I've ever had, Laura. Well, let, 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 let's, let's see then, you are, you are here, we're glad that you're here this morning. You have promised to the country, and under your plan, Scotland is due to have a referendum in a year and 10 days mm -hmm. time. Are you confident that will happen? Uh, yes, I am confident that uh, that can happen. Um, as Joanna Cherry's just been outlining, the Supreme Court next week will consider the question of does the Scottish Parliament have the competence to legislate for that referendum? There's little point speculating on the outcome mm -hmm. of a, a court uh, hearing. But should the answer to that be yes, we have the plans ready to go to legislate uh, the uh, work on refreshing and updating the substantive case for independence mm -hmm. is well underway. In fact, mm -hmm. that will continue over the course of mm -hmm. the next days. Um, so, you know, let's, as Joanna just said, wait and see what the court says. And but you, but I'm it, confident Scotland is going to become independent. But if you have that vote, what's to stop the UK government saying, well, we're not going to take part, we're not going to participate? Look, I, I cannot sit here and... Uh, predicate everything I do on uh, the, the basis that a UK government will continue to act in a deeply anti-democratic fashion. I've got to do what I consider to be the right thing, which is firstly respecting the will of the Scottish people, which remember is for an independence referendum. I was elected last year as First Minister on a record share of the vote, on a record turnout, on a very clear manifesto commitment to a referendum. But just so, on that practical point, and I know why you want to have it and you believe you've got the right to have well, that, but think, on that practical point, mm -hmm. you can't stop the UK saying, we're not taking I part. don't think, if, if the Supreme Court paves the way for a lawful referendum next year, I, I think the vast majority of the people of Scotland would take part in that. Mm. And, you know, the UK government might decide to say they don't want them to take part in that, mm. but I don't think that is going to prevail. And I, but, apart from anything else, I think the overwhelming impression that that gives, which I think the UK government is already giving by their refusal to countenance democracy, is that they don't believe they can win the substantive case. If, if you are confident in your arguments in politics, if you are confident in the case that you are making, then you don't fear democracy. Mm. You actually relish the opportunity to put your case before the people and let the people decide. Well, let's talk about where the arguments are then, and I think we can show you and also the audience where support for independence has mm. been. So if we look there, this graph goes all the way back to July 2016, and essentially it's 50-50. It's been 50-50 for a long time, bouncing up and down a bit. But there's another question that people are asked about whether or not they want the choice now or would they like the choice in a few years. And if we can look at that then, it paints really quite a different picture. And I think if we can bring this up, essentially support for having a referendum now is far, far lower. Look at this here. When do you want another Scottish referendum? Again, people have been asked over time. In the next 12 months, that's often less than 30%. So do you really feel that the public want to have this now, no, let, let because make, the polls suggest something very different. Let me make two points in, in response to that. It's a fair question. Firstly, you know, opinion polls are important. You know, no politician who says opinion polls are not important is, is credible because we all love poring over opinion polls. But mm. on this question of is there a mandate for an independence referendum, we don't actually have to look at opinion polls because mm. that election result that I talked about last year, yeah 
the SNP won the election on a very clear manifesto commitment. Now, usually political parties get criticised for not sticking to and delivering their manifesto commitments. I'm getting criticised in this context for trying to deliver on that commitment. But secondly, and this is the substantive point, you know, we are seeing every day right now the issues you were speaking to the panel about, the mm -hmm. consequences for Scotland of not being independent. You know, Alistair uh, in 2014 told the people of Scotland uh, with his colleagues that independence would threaten our membership of the European Union, independence would imperil people's pensions, independence would cause a currency crisis. Look where we are right now, out of the, the European Union, pensions within hours but uh, first of minister, falling the, but the down arguments and, for and against. the currency plunging. These are the consequences that people are paying the price of right now but and for, these all flow for Scotland but, from not being an independent but, country. And, and that's your view and you've made that very clear. But the question of the arguments for and against independence is a different one to whether there really is public clamour, public demand for a vote within the next year in 12 months, which is what, which is what you would like. And, and what, we've, what we've shown people this morning is there isn't a huge clamour to have a vote and the arguments are pretty settled 50-50. Look, I fought an election on this manifesto commitment and won the election overwhelmingly. You know, I, I believe that there is an appetite for a referendum. The opinion mm -hmm. polls on this question, even more than opinion polls on the headline uh, issue, uh, come and go and, and mm -hmm. ebb and That's flow. Around. But at the end of the day, I, I believe very firmly, and I think this is a, a, a bit of an iron law of politics, uh, if the other side of this debate really believed people in Scotland didn't want a referendum, and if they really believed that people in Scotland would vote against independence, they would be the ones clamouring for a, a referendum well, Maybe they right just now. don't want the disruption. Uh, they well, don't want people to go through well, it again. For goodness sake. I mean, disruption? I mean, perish the thought that we would have disruption in people's lives right now. The disruption that people are suffering right now are coming from decisions that have been imposed on Scotland against our will. From Brexit to the kind of decisions that we saw Liz Trust take just a couple of weeks ago. The and, impact and of that on people. Now, that is because, as a country, we don't have control over our and, own and destiny. That's, and that's your issue. view, and you take, make that no, very but clearly. But I'd like complete, to talk about what you, can what you do. Can I complete one point on this right briefly, now? Briefly, if you can, we, we've got so we much to talk about. We are here in Aberdeen mm -hmm. uh, for the last uh, five decades, the oil and gas capital of Europe. But Scotland is now uh, the, one of the, the renewable capitals of uh, Europe. We have massive renewable energy, and yet we are sitting here with people of Scotland facing and, soaring energy And we are going to talk about energy a bit later. And so, possible so power cuts. We're, and we're going to talk about energy a bit later on. Westminster and, is not working. And we're going to talk about energy a bit later on. But I want to stick about what you what you do. Let's say the Supreme Court doesn't allow mm. you to have this vote. Now you've now said if there isn't a way of having a referendum, you would treat the next general election, the next UK general election, as if it were a referendum on independence. Now to be exactly clear about what you mean there, what you're saying is that if more than half of the population voted for parties who back independence you believe that would give you a mandate to make Scotland an independent country? That's what we would do if the Supreme Court say there is no way for a referendum. Can I say that? That is not my preference. It's not what I want to happen. But that's now your plan but, B. Well, look, we have to have an alternative. If, if democracy is blocked, if the, the route by which uh, it would be right to consider and decide this issue, which is a, a lawful constitutional referendum, is blocked by Westminster mm. because they fear the democratic choice of the people of Scotland, then for me and for the SNP and for people who support independence, the choice is then simple. We put our case to people in an election or we mm. give up on Scottish democracy. And, you know, I want to be very clear today, I will never, ever give up on Scottish democracy. But you used to say that doing anything other than having a legal, legitimate referendum was a unionist trap to use your yeah. words, and a few years ago, actually, at your party conference, people put forward the idea of using a general election, and you said, you said be, no, you said it was a trap. But it, but it should be a last resort. I don't want to be in that position. I want to have a, a lawful referendum. That's, mm -hmm. wh whether you support or oppose independence, and both of those views are valid, I'm very clearly on one side of that debate, but whatever your, your, your view is on independence, the way to decide it is in a democratic, lawful referendum. So we're only talking so not, about the not scenario. Not a general election. Well, because but, a general but, election but wouldn't guarantee you okay, independence, so, would it? But, but the, the thing is here, if a referendum is blocked, completely indefensibly blocked by a Westminster government, then what choice do, do we have? We, we say, well, the, the voice of Scotland doesn't matter, Scottish democracy doesn't matter, or we put our case to the people in but the that general also election. Wouldn't be, but let's wouldn't hope we're not a, in that position. But, but that also wouldn't give you a guarantee of it actually happening. And 
I mean, per perhaps it's the case that actually your this... options, well, well, perhaps it's the case that your options in a way are, are sort of running out of road. You know, you promised a referendum in the 2016 election, it didn't happen. You promised a referendum in 2017, it didn't happen. You tried again in 2019, it didn't happen. It was promised again in 21 and it didn't happen. And now there's this potential plan B, if the court doesn't go your way, about using the next general election. Now, this isn't about saying whether it's a good idea or not a good idea. It's about whether or not you maybe admit that you just don't have the mechanism to make it happen. You just don't well, have do you know, the if method. True, if, if that is true, if my options are, are limited, which, you know, obviously is the case to some extent, then yeah. that is because I am in, Scotland is in a system, and we face a Westminster system that simply will not respect Scottish democracy, that will not look at an, an election result in Scotland, uh, electing a government on a manifesto commitment for a referendum and say, do you know what? We will argue against independence in that referendum, but it is right and proper that we respect the right of the people of Scotland to decide. So if, if our options are limited, it is because a Westminster system refuses Scottish democracy. And I have to say that then is one of the most powerful arguments mm. for Scotland being an independent country. The UK is meant to be you know, a voluntary partnership uh, of nations. And if we have a position where Scotland is told that we're not even allowed the choice of becoming independent, mm -hmm. then it is no longer a voluntary partnership of nations. The whole basis of the United Kingdom falls apart. So that is a really powerful argument for being an independent country, so that we do then have a partnership of equals mm -hmm. with the other nations Well, it's of going to be UK. a fascinating few weeks it's and months indeed. ahead with the court decision. Um, let's turn to energy, and we are, after all, in Aberdeen, capital of the UK oil and gas industry. Um, you've criticised the UK's plan to issue new oil and gas licenses and you've said they should be climate compatible there's a system of checking whether or not things um, tick all the right boxes but would you ever support issuing new oil and gas licenses I know it's up to Westminster at the moment but if you're independent so it'd be up said, to you would you approve them or not well I'll come directly to that question in a minute but let's just put this into context first of all the, the North Sea which has served Scotland well mm -hmm is you know a mature basin it's a declining resource uh, even before we consider the environmental uh, imperative here yeah, but, but we this also is a, this I'm, is I'm coming a... on to but we also have the environmental imperative of having to move away from fossil fuels as quickly as possible mm -hmm. people have and the Scotland is in the lucky... to pay their bills and keep the lights on yeah, but, yeah but but exactly we're in the lucky position of having this vast renewable potential we've just given the go ahead to up to 28 gigawatts of offshore wind energy and, through and, the Scotland and first Minister, for, forgive so me for pressing the... you but time is short this is a question of principle. Would you ever, can you see circumstances where you would approve licenses for new oil what and I've gas said exploration? Is, whether it's new licenses or existing licenses that are applying for development consent, there must be at every stage a robust climate compatibility But if there check. is, so you if, would, because Friends of the Earth have said there can be no climate compatible new oil and well, gas. So that, in a sense, is the point I'm coming on to. I am very sceptical as to whether new exploration can pass that test. But without seeing the, the climate comp compatibility assessments, I can't answer that question in the hypothetical. But I am sceptical in the context we are in right now, uh, if, that, if, if any of but that would pass But that's interesting, because clearly then on principle, if they could, then you might, you wouldn't say well, no, we're, no, we're never. We're in a hypothetical situation. Okay. The problem right well, now is it, those climate compatibility yeah. checks are not being done uh -huh. uh, in the, the case of... But, but you're clearly like saying no, no, never, but you're, just, you're not sure uh, if they're not be. doing. They're not uh, been done strongly enough in the case of okay. new licences. Okay. Now, income tax is devolved in Scotland, mm. and there's a different tax system, with different tax rates. Um, but Liz Truss has just announced a 1p cut to the basic rate, 20p down to 19p. Well, she's announced it, whether it actually comes into being. Well, well that's a question for her and the government. You know. We might ask Nadeem Zahawi later on. But will you cut your tax rate to match that so that people pay less in Scotland? Well, we will set our budget in December and we will set out our tax plans as part of that. And we will come to that uh, decision in a, a balanced way, taking account of all of mm -hmm. the, the factors you would expect any government to. But can I, but point, bit... out, can I point out right now, right now, mm -hmm. the majority of income taxpayers in Scotland already pay less income tax than the rest they, of the They do, the but UK. that's why I asked this question, because after the UK's changes, sure. all Scottish taxpayers will pay the same or more if you don't if, match if any put, of the tax cuts. And we'll take that decision in the course of our budget consideration and we will Mind weigh you, up. There's about a million we, people in we Scotland who pay 20p. The, the need to ensure uh, that tax is fair and progressive. We already have a more progressive system, but we'll also weigh up the need 
to have proper investment in our public services, not least our National Health Service, which is having you know, significant challenges right now. What we will not do, uh, and uh, it's not that long ago, just a week or so ago, when Scottish Conservatives, yeah. commentators mm -hmm. were demanding that we followed suit to abolish but the in, top rate of tax. We will not cut tax for the wealthiest at the expense but, but of everybody else that, and though, their public this services. This is about there are about a million people in Scotland who pay that rate, and what I'm hearing this morning is you, 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 you well, aren't you ready to, to say well, whether but, or not they'll have, pay let the they'll have a cut in the same with way the greatest that English respect, Laura, we have a well-established mm -hmm. budget process in Scotland. Oh, no, that's fine. I'm just asking so we you the question the and you don't want to answer it yet. And that's we fine. will take the decision based on a balanced consideration. This is a really difficult time for people. Mm -hmm. We are doing things to try to lift the incomes mm -hmm. of those at the lowest. We have a Scottish child that's payment why they might in quite Scotland. Like a tax cut. Oh, but, but we have a Scottish child payment in Scotland that nobody else in the UK has. £25 a week almost uh, soon for every child in low-income families. Uh, we don't pay for prescriptions in in Scotland, we have and, free and, tuition and there's in lots Scotland. of decisions you have to make in the your budget, and we'll, so we'll, 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 we'll look forward Scotland. to get good value for money, a better value for money than anywhere well, that's, else in that's, the UK. That's your view. We'll look forward to seeing your budget a bit later fact, in the a, a bit later in the year. <laughs> Just briefly, we're, we're 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 running out of time, but um, is, let's trust a friend or a foe. We're political opponents, but I've always tried to work with her predecessors and I will try to work with her. So I would like to be a friend on the basis of uh, the areas where we can work together constructively. And what about Keir Starmer, friend or foe? I, I work very well with Keir Starmer over Brexit. I'm really disappointed that Keir Starmer um, has thrown in the towel on uh, the European Union and no longer wants to take the UK or Scotland back into the and European Union. who would you Union. rather have as Prime Minister? Well, that's not a difficult question. I mean, if the question to me is would I prefer a Labour government over a Tory government, I, I detest the Tories and everything they stand for, so it's not difficult to answer that question. Uh, so so yes, rather, you want to see but, Keir Starmer you know, in what say, Two things, two things. Firstly, you know, being better than the Tories is not a high bar to cross right now. I think we need to see more of a radical alternative from Labour rather than just a pale imitation. And if you're asking me, do I think either a Westminster Tory government or a Westminster Labour government is good enough for Scotland, then my answer to that question is no. First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, thank you thank so you. much for joining us here in Aberdeen this morning.